South Africa continues to face stage four power cuts tonight, despite lower demand because it's a public holiday. Former ESCOM CEO Andre Dorator estimates that a billion rand is stolen from the utility every month, significantly contributing to the rolling power cuts. For more on this, we're joined by University of Johannesburg Physics Professor Hartmut Winkler. A very good evening to you, Prof. Grateful for your time. So, mm -hmm. as things stand, I mean, I just quoted a number there that Andre Dorator has repeated it more than once at this point about the extent to which corruption is at the heart of the collapse, if you will, of the grid and ESCOM itself. How do we close the taps? How do we protect ESCOM from this looting? Uh, yes, well, it, I guess that's a, a billion-dollar question at the moment. Um, ultimately, well, I suppose everybody's got ideas. Um, sure, if you put enough uh, police and whatever to, 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 to watch things, that's fine. But I think what you actually really need is some sort of a specialized unit that, that, uh, that focuses on this sort of activity. Because we're talking about specific uh, activity, uh, actions, such as uh, delivering coal, which is contaminated with, uh, with other rocks, uh, and those can cause a lot of damage to power stations. And uh, also things like uh, delivering uh, um, uh, components, which uh, ultimately then you can't find. So, it's, uh, so ultimately, it, there's patterns involved there. I think you also need better intelligence probably than you have at the moment. Uh, so what I'd personally like to see is, is, is the police setting up some sort of very specialized unit which just really focuses on, on these sort of activities. Uh, having said that, though, I, I think uh, uh, sabotage, yes, is a concern. Corruption is a concern. It's not the only thing which is, is, is wrong with Eskom, though. Right. And it's, you mentioned uh, uh, intelligence. Prof, we'll get into the other issues in a moment. You mentioned intelligence. I want to pick up on that because it came up yesterday when News24 mm -hmm. published a piece saying basically there was a report an investigation, if you will, commissioned, uh, funded by business to look into some of the issues at ESCOM. They say it basically brought nothing that was useful as far as concrete evidence that could be used. We're hearing now that a former apartheid operative was in fact part of that investigation. And I wonder to what extent that has muddied the waters and the credibility of some of the information that's been brought forward by someone like Andre Dorator, who would have had sight of that report and even known that the investigation was going to be done. Yes, very much so. I, I, unfortunately, that's, it, it, it's really it, it spoiled what uh, it could have been a very good initiative. And um, it's clear that Andre Dorato uh, believed everything he was told, uh, even though, according to uh, his, his News 24 report, uh, the, many of the more, more damning uh, information had very little, if any, evidence at all. And, and I think you simply cannot come forward. Uh, and, and make such accusations uh, without uh, being very sure of, of your facts. I think, I think everybody in the country knows that there's some degree of, of, of uh, malfeasance going on at Eskom and so on, um, but we cannot uh, come in with, with uh, sort of with a fairly specific accusations implying, you know, talking of senior politician here and there. And of course, uh, immediately people start wondering who that is likely to be and so on, and, uh, and then not have the, the actual proof for that. So. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think ultimately it turned out to be quite a blunder for him. And, uh, and uh, yes, certainly, I, I, from what I've seen, I would treat a lot of the what's written in this uh, so-called report with, with a lot of care. Uh, sure, some of the things might later turn out with a bit more uh, information that might actually later turn out to be have some substance to them. But uh, certainly right now, we, what Andre Dereta seemed to know is, is very little more than what most of the rest of the country knew already. And... It takes us, would you agree, potentially, Prof, to back to square one in terms of getting a full, honest understanding of yes. what has gone on and who is to blame, because it also brings about, once we start hearing that someone who was basically a spy for the apartheid government um, sort of killed activists during those years, once mm -hmm. information such as that is thrown into the mix and business funded the investigation, yes. um, it politicizes once more the running and fixing of ESCOM. Yes, I exactly. The next time somebody comes with, with a substa uh, substantive accusation that can be backed up, that's the first thing that's going to be thrown to them. Uh, or, oh, that's probably another one of these, these fake news stories uh, concocted by dubious characters from the past. Uh, so we, we're going to be hearing a lot of that in, in, in defense. And as you said, it, it, it's muddied the waters uh, enormously. So. Uh, the initiative to, to, to rid uh, Eskom of, of, uh, Eskom of, of du dubious elements of that is just going to be made more difficult. It's because, um, uh, yeah, I think, I think uh, you've summed it up quite nicely there. 
So what sort of investigation do you think we need to get to the bottom of what's going on at ESCOM? I know SCOPA had Dereta appear yesterday. They're going to call the likes of the Public Enterprises Minister, Pravin Gordon. They also want to hear from the Police Commissioner, as well as officials from Treasury, perhaps. But what sort of deep dive investigation do we need to actually get a full independent assessment of what's gone on? Yes, well, well all, all, what, the, what the SCOPA investigation is probably going to uh, find out eventually who uh, who the, the, the politician was that was being accused of, of not doing anything. But ultimately, that doesn't uh, uh, solve the Eskom problem. It, it, it just uh, might uh, assist us in, in, in working out what, uh, what went wrong with a specific investigation and, and, and possible action or non-action in this regard. But I think what we, what we need to do, and, and yes, uh, during his time at Eskom, uh, Andre de Reuter did point out quite a number of things where uh, where certain goods were being purchased at uh, way beyond what uh, what they should have cost and so on. So yeah, he, he's gone to the special investigative unit. Uh, they've got a fairly good record of, of dealing with these things, and, and uh, indeed they've been some of the ones that have come up with uh, with uh, some of the uh, uh, people that have been uh, now been identified as, as being behind those things. I, I still think we ultimately probably only have mainly small fish in that, but the more you catch small fish eventually, that's going to lead you to, to whoever the fish big fishes are. The moment is also, it's not very clear uh, what's behind this. This is a highly organized thing, the organ, uh, at, 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 at a, at a, organized at a top political, maybe at a foreign level. Is this just a, a few chances that have uh, identified weaknesses in, in the uh, Eskom pre procurement system and are taking advantage of that. We, we, we're not really too sure how, uh, uh, how deep this problem is. Um, I'd, I'd be reluctant to institute another Zondo Life Commission to that because that's going to take ages and, and, and cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, I would just say uh, send in a few specialized units to investigate uh, with the capacity to look at, uh, at procurement issues uh, and, and so on. And, and, and let them methodically go through what's been going on in the, in the Mpumalanga coal fields and, and, and associated power stations. Professor Hartmut Winkler, good to have your time on this public holiday with the University of Johannesburg. Thank you.